Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Donkey Kong Country Returns. We're finally going to move on to the game's eighth and final world, the volcano. We're going to start it out with 8-1 Furious Fire. And of course, being the final world, it's going to house pretty much the most difficult levels we face so far. Um, I guess K levels excluded, but um, still, these things are really hard. And uh, of course, being a fire level, it seems that whenever that happens in games, it's, there's usually just a lot of things that are out to get you. So uh, that's definitely the case here, too. And uh, you also really have to like uh, kind of what they did with this place. I mean, it really feels like it's really hot in here, you know. I really, uh, I do like the whole background and environment and thing. While it's really not one of my favorite worlds, uh, just because I really don't like about half of the levels here, um, it, it has done really well. I actually have to uh, really applaud them for that. So as you can see, the first puzzle piece was in that little cut out there, so let's make sure to grab that. And uh, here we're going to be introduced to those big flaming rocks. You're going to be seeing a lot of them throughout this level. That's pretty much uh, the main idea here. So um, really, anytime you venture into a new area, just kind of take it somewhat slow and make sure that your path is clear before you head forward because it's very easy to be caught by surprise if you're not expecting them. Now here we've got to jump up and grab the K. So let's do that. And anytime they go over top of you like that, you can duck and uh, just go underneath them. So you're going to be doing that quite a bit here as well. All right, now the next puzzle piece you can see is right there, so let's hang out and wait for a path to clear a little bit here. All right, and of course there's also going to be a lot of fire enemies, including those blue flame guys that like to shoot out the projectiles. You're going to be seeing a lot of them as well. So, ah, well, that kind of sucked, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so here we're going to have to go all the way back along to the left, and that was oh, also really horrible. So, okay, well, we're off to a bad start. There should be a DK barrel here somewhat soon, though, I think. Um, unless I've already passed it and didn't even realize it, I don't know, but... Okay, so we got that puzzle piece after taking two hits, um, and now we have to grab the O underneath. Of course, just doing a roll jump to go underneath is the way to do that. And here's one of those blue guys. Let's see if we can take care of him. There we go. And pound on this thing three times, and this will happen. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. I've always liked that. Okay, so now let's keep on going this way. We got some more big flaming rocks to deal with, of course, and some blue fire guys as well. You can see the end is over there, so we're going to have to jump across and blow this guy out. Um, you can either jump on him to grab it or just jump up, but um, I like taking him out in the process. So, yeah, just make sure the path is clear before you go and jump across. I made that mistake earlier. Okay, so now let's go. And here we're going to have to uh, pound through these blocks and not get hit by the big fireball here. So uh, once we do that, we can go to the left, into this blast barrel, and be shot up into a bonus game. So we kind of get a little bit of relaxation, but I think you can already tell, uh, just from what we've been through, that World 8 is really still even stepping it up from the previous worlds, you know? Um, it, it really earns its title as the final world in the game, so we're going to have a lot of challenging stuff coming up ahead of us, but... For now, let's just get back and finish this level. We've got three of our five puzzle pieces now, so we are well on our way. Yeah, there's the DK barrel. I knew there was one, so... Okay, there we go. We're back up to full health again. Whoa, watch out for that thing. Okay, now here we're going to have to obviously pull on this vine. It's very obvious, but first I want to wait for this um, rock to pass over me first. And then pull it. And once we do so, some platforms will raise up there. We want to jump across them. You only have a little bit of time, so it'll be somewhat quick. But there's the fourth puzzle piece right up there. And now we can make our way forward again. There we go. I guess that's the way to do that. <laughs> I could have swore I was going to get hit there, but I guess it worked out. Okay, so now let's keep going. Um, the la I think we only need one more puzzle piece and the G, if I remember uh, correctly. I don't remember exactly what all we've picked up because I'm too busy concentrating on not dying here. But um, The last bit of stuff is in this little area right here. We're going to have some curved platforms and some rocks going around in circular patterns. These are really annoying. Um, there's really nowhere that you can just duck underneath them or anything like that. So you kind of have to be somewhat quick and uh, also patient whenever the time calls for it. So now we've got the uh, final puzzle piece up there. You can see the G is in that little area to the right. So let's jump up and go again underneath and back to the left. Just make sure we don't get hit by that thing. Uh oh. Phew, man, that was really close. All right, so we grab the G and then that finishes up everything. So all that's left to do is get to the end of the level. 
it's been a pretty long one, hasn't it? <laughs> you know, it's especially long when you're trying to actually take your time and not get hit by everything, you know? Alright, so let's just make our way across these crumbling platforms. Be somewhat quick, but you've got plenty of time. Then here's the exit barrel. Jump up really fast because those platforms will crumble underneath you and you don't want to die right at the end of the level, so... <laughs> Alright, so that takes care of the first level in World 8. The Kong letters, the puzzle pieces. Awesome. Let's continue. Okay, so I think actually we're gonna open up the shop after this level, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I can see there's another path up, which leads to Cranky Kong's shop, so let's go ahead and buy his key again here. Uh, so who hasn't stolen your bananas at this point? <laughs> you know, that is a good question. He needs to find somewhere better to live, I think. Okay, so now we've bought the key, let's get back out of here. Can't say I expect to see you again, but you might get lucky, I guess. Actually, we probably won't see him again, because we won't need to buy any more keys. This is the final world, so... Well, say goodbye to Cranky Kong, everybody. It's, it's been fun, but... <laughs> We're gonna move on to 8-2, Hot Rocket. And as you can probably guess by the uh, name of this level, it is going to be a rocket barrel level, so uh, plenty of fun will be had here. And of course, being in the game's final world, they're really not going to make it easy on you at this point. This level um, is really difficult to complete just normally, you know, let alone grabbing everything on top of it. That really pushes it into nightmarish difficulty levels, but um, it'll be awesome. So uh, let's jump up into this little blast barrel here. That will take us to a bonus game for our first puzzle piece. And this is pretty cool because I like the uh, background. It's very tempting to just kind of sit there and watch it instead of pay attention to what I'm doing. So, um, <laughs> I think it might be a good idea to pay a little bit of attention at least. See, there we go, 20.2. I told you, if I do that exactly right, 20.2 every time. Okay, so we get back down, and of course there are five puzzle pieces, being a vehicle level, so at least now we've only got four to collect in the actual rocket barrel section, along with the four Kong letters, so... Alright, so let's get this thing started. What's going to be going on here is we're going to have to avoid these rocks coming out from the lava and also falling from the ceiling, so don't get too comfortable up there on the top. I uh, just keep making your way in between. There's some pretty tight fits. I almost hit my head right there. The K is right underneath that first rock. And now here we're going to have some fireballs coming in. The second one is going to hit this rock, which will drop out a puzzle piece, so go underneath it to grab it. Now here we're going to have to go in between those two fireballs to grab that puzzle piece. You can't just avoid them from the top and still grab the puzzle piece. Um, that one is really, really hard to get, so it might take a few tries. The O is up there, just make sure not to go up too high and hit your head. And then we finally hit a checkpoint. Now things are going to actually calm down a little bit from here, I'd say. Um, we've got these lava dragons to deal with, but as you can see, they move kind of slow and just go around a nice little circular pattern, so... Um, grab the end down there, then also grab all these bananas to get puzzle piece number four. And now we're going to have to be dealing with a bunch of these guys. And here, avoid this one to the top and swoop down to get the G. That one's very easily missed. And then I like to go underneath this one and make our way up and out of it. That one gets kind of close, but... All right, now here we've got to grab all these bananas that are on the lava without hitting the lava and dying. <laughs> and they're crab puzzle piece number five. Now all that's left to do is to get out of this level. Do not pay attention to that lava wave. It will not get you. So just keep going and then eventually the rocket barrel crabs out. Get onto the platform and check one last time. Five puzzle pieces, four Kong letters. Awesome, let's get out of here. <laughs> Whew, man, all right. So yeah, that one, as you can see, is really, really tough. Um, if you're trying to get 100% in it your first time through, you will have to do this level many, many times. I know I did my first time through. And uh, also, this wasn't the first take at this level in recording either. <laughs> so there we go. I'm just glad to get that one out of the way. That's one of the more problematic levels. So we're going to move on to 8-3, Roasting Rails. And once again, you can guess by the name, this is going to be a vehicle level, namely a minecart one. So, I mean, you'll also notice that I've lost Diddy. I've actually done that on purpose because I think this level, um, at least a large part of it anyway, is easier without him. You only have two hits, but, you know, a lot of it's minecarting. And if you accidentally hold A too long, then it'll completely kill your momentum with the jetpack. So, um, I like to just be Donkey Kong for this level. Alright, so we got some climbable seamers to go across, obviously, just be quick there. Now uh, we jump up here into this barrel, that will open up a passage, but you want to walk across instead of getting back in the barrel because there's another barrel underneath, and that will take us to a bonus game. So it's kind of interesting because this is the uh, second vehicle level in a row where they've given us a bonus game puzzle piece before we've got to the actual vehicle itself, so that's kind of interesting. And uh, they had to make this like one of the most annoying varieties. Eh, like this one isn't really difficult, it just feels like it takes so long. 
Alright, so let's grab the three up top. Then get the puzzle piece and finally get out of here. Alright, now once we start the actual minecart section, which we're about to do, a lot of stuff is going to happen, so make sure you're paying attention. Uh, the K is up top here, just make sure to jump to grab that, and get onto the probable ceiling and get down. Now in this minecart, it's going to fall off the track, but you want to stay on to get puzzle piece number two. And the barrel in the next minecart, jump immediately to get puzzle piece number three. Yeah, I'm telling you, rapid fire, man, and this is kind of hard to keep up with. So, uh, here we've got... Oh, man, that was really close. I almost always get hit by that ball of fire. Just drop down a little bit to grab the O before jumping out. And then make our way on through. Jump over the fire tiki, grab the N in that trail of bananas. Jump over the fire tiki again, and on to solid land. So, let's see, how long was that? Like, 30 seconds, and we got three puzzle pieces and three Kong letters. So, man, that, that's really fast-paced, but... It's not over yet. we still got a little bit more to do, so let's get going. Alright, so let's just keep jumping over these guys. On this platform, there's a vase with a puzzle piece. Um, it makes you fall really behind these platforms, though. So, uh, just, you know, don't panic too much. You've got enough time, just barely, but um, you, you do have time to do it. Alright, so here we want to drop down and then get on more climbable ceilings. Now, this time, once we reach the end, we want to drop down and wait because the puzzle piece will be right there. Then wait for that fireball and make your way on through more climbable ceilings. We are just about at the end. Drop into the barrel here and next minecart. Then we can uh, grab these bananas if you want. You want to practice doing that jump because there's a G right there you got to get. Then get in this minecart, get in that minecart, onto the platform, and as you can see, five of five and all four cog letters. So again, another pretty fast-paced level there. Um, that one can be really hard to do. It's really easy actually to overshoot the minecarts because um, your momentum seems to really carry you sometimes. So you really just got to work on aiming your jumps and uh, trying to be calm in the face of all of that crap going on. I know it's hard to do, but um, that's, you know, you pretty much have to do it if you want to be able to grab everything. We're going to go to 8-4, Smoky Peak. And uh, this is a nice little change, actually, from vehicle levels, as you'll soon see once we get into it. I guess I decided to give you um, a little bit of a fun level. Because, as you can see, we've got the silhouette art style again. It's like, we, we haven't seen that since the beginning of the game, but then we saw it twice in the last two worlds, so I don't know, they were kind of... I, I think they forgot about it, and at the end they're like, Oh yeah, didn't we have that really cool art thing that we did before? But, <laughs> yeah. Alright, you can also see there are gears up here with Rambi's face on it, so we're going to be running into him. Of course, in fact, we're going to do so right now. So you want to pound on this, then jump on the platform that raises in order to get him out. See, now, normally, um, when you get to a Rambi level, it's like, oh, this is pretty much easy mode or god mode, like I probably called it at some point. So, um, the only differences with this one is that we're in the fire world, and fire happens to be what Rambi can get hit by, so... Um, he, he may not be quite as comfortable here, but you want to go back to the left and hit that gear in order to get puzzle piece number one, so just make sure you backtrack for that before we move on. So now let's make our way over here, break the crate once again, I don't know who, like, rebuilt it, but whatever. <laughs> So we hit the gear to lower this platform, and now as we go over here, you can see the K is on top of this little stack of blocks. Um, the only thing is, if you bring Rambi, he will break this, and you don't want to do that, because you need these blocks in order to bounce off this guy and get up here to get puzzle piece number two. So, now that we've got that, we can go back and get him. Don't worry, he doesn't go anywhere, um, unless he takes damage. I think he can take a hit if you're off of him, and like an enemy runs into him or something, so... Uh, just keep that in mind, leave him somewhere safe anyway. Alright, so here we've got these little uh, lava droplets that we're going to have to avoid as we jump across here. Not too bad. Whoa, I killed that Tiki there. That was kind of cool. Okay, yeah, you can see the O is up there, so we want to leave him on this moving platform. You don't want to drop him off there because he'll get hit by the uh, lava. So, you know, obviously you don't want that to happen. So let's grab the O and then go back and get him again. And now keep on going. And here's checkpoint number one. And of course, they do give you Rambi again in case you lose him, because uh, you obviously need him to get through all this. Alright, so now let's keep going. These platforms are going to start kind of falling away from you when you step on them, so be somewhat quick. Um, if you can bounce on an enemy, it won't start falling. Um, otherwise, you don't really have that much time, so, you know, don't dawdle too much. And here we've got these uh, two concentric circles of bananas, and once you grab all of them, a puzzle piece will pop out, which is number three. So now let's keep on going. It's always just a good idea to take it a little bit slow. Um, so, you know, you can make sure that you're not going to miss anything by destroying any of these blocks. But um, overall, this level is still pretty relaxing. Um, here, 
yeah, you could do it that way. Um, I should have kept those blocks, you know, safe there instead of destroying them, but you can get it that way if you want by jumping up and dismounting. You get a little bit of extra height, uh, much like Yoshi in Super Mario World, actually, so that's kind of cool. All right, so here's checkpoint number two, and now we've got some more lava to deal with, and again, they give you Rambi. Now here we're going to have to uh, sort of wait for these little lava falls to get out of the way, and this is really mean, by the way. Um, if you hit those lava falls, you will die in one hit, and as you can see, the end drops after this one, so uh, you just got to know when to time it. Um, like I said, if you get hit, it's one hit death, so you might have to try that one a couple times until you get the timing down. So then from here, let's just keep going, hit the gear, and go on to the next platform. Now, once we get here, you kind of want to start running, because these things are going to eventually fall away from underneath you. So it's really a good idea to just keep on moving, keep shaking that Wii remote. But as you go over here, make sure to wait up a little bit and grab the G. You don't want to miss that. It's very easy to. Now we go on up the hill, and we're just about done. As you can see, there's the exit barrel. But first, we've got to do something. And it's actually funny that I mentioned Super Mario World, because you're going to have to do this. Do a jump and then dismount in order to make it the rest of the way. It looks like you might make it, but you just hit the side if you uh, try to just do that jump on Rami. So you really have to just throw him down into the pit. Um, <laughs> I'm sure everybody who's played Super Mario World has done that at some point. So <laughs> that's kind of neat, but... Either way, we got through the level, got all four Kong letters and the five puzzle pieces, so now we are good to go. Now, if I remember correctly, I think there are seven regular levels in World 8. Of course, then the K and the B. The K to this world is actually really fun. Um, I enjoy it. And, of course, the boss, since we're in the final world, is going to be pretty much the final boss. So, this time we're going to go to 8-5, Bobbing the Salt. And this one can be really, really tricky, actually, to grab 100% um, of everything. So, um, we're gonna have to do quite a bit of work in order to grab everything, especially at one point you literally have to pass up, like, two, like, one puzzle piece and one of the Kong letters in order to get to a puzzle piece later on. It's, it's really complicated, but thankfully the first one's really simple. Just go over to the left and grab that base, and that will get the first puzzle piece. Now we've just gotta make our way along these, bounce off this guy, and get another banana coin off him, why not? So uh, at this point, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure to watch out for the platforms that sink all the way into the lava. You can tell which ones they are because they have this really bright orange hue to them. And uh, also, you want to wait a little bit before you jump on them, because when they just come out of the lava, you can actually still take damage. I found that out the hard way before. So, <laughs> All right, now here we want to bounce off this guy. Again, you've got three tries to do so. So you should be able to do it, especially by this point, if you've made it this far in the game, you know? Alright, so now we're going to get here, and we're going to have to avoid these rocks, which move in, as far as I know, a completely random pattern. So what you see whenever you get here will probably be completely different than what you're seeing right now. Make sure to watch out for those quick ones that come out there. Oh man, holy crap, that thing completely just went everywhere. Alright, I need a way through. Whew, okay, there we go. Alright, so we get through, and now we've got to pound on this DK thing, which is going to cause this to start sinking. Now, you want to go somewhat quickly so you don't get caught up by the lava, but make sure you grab everything on your way up here, uh, including all the coins and bananas and everything. And then once you do so, a puzzle piece will appear on this platform right here, which is number three. Now we've got to grab the O. That one's pretty easy. You just jump out to get it. Uh, you really don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, you got some of these bats to deal with. I think this is actually the only time you see them in this level. I don't really know what they're there for, but <laughs> whatever. Alright, so once we get here, we're going to have a checkpoint with a DK barrel, and if I'm remembering correctly, we want to leave the barrel alone for right now. Yeah, because as you can see, there is actually a blast barrel at the top here, which will take us to a bonus game. And then once we get back, we're going to have to do something with that barrel, so it's a good idea to just leave it alone for right now. And of course, they had to make this one of the more annoying bonus games. And... Okay, get up there, grab the balloon, there you go. Alright, just get the rest of these and then make your way over it. There were a couple times there where I thought I was going to fall, but... Alright, so now we get back, and like I said, we're going to be doing something with the DK barrel, so grab it and hang on to it. You're going to need to hang on to this thing for a while. Now we're going to have to make our way through here, and then through these crushing things, and uh, then wait for the fire to get through. Again, you do not want to get hit. You don't want to hit anything with the barrel. You also have to make your way through these randomly moving rocks with it, which can be a little bit tough. And, uh, go ahead and kill these guys so they don't cause me any problems. Now, once we get here, we want to take the upper path and uh, obviously avoid the fireballs as they come up. Again, still holding the DK barrel. You do need it. 
Now, once we get out here, you can see there's an end right there. We're going to have to come back for that. Uh, we're going to have to make our way in between these fireballs here, which can be a little bit nerve-wracking, but um, you got plenty of room. It's really not too bad. Then here's where you need to use the DK barrel, blow that thing open, and get to a bonus game. Um, we've actually passed up a couple of collectibles. This is that spot that I mentioned at the beginning. So um, after we finish this, we're actually going to be backtracking for a little bit. But um, for now, let's just finish the task at hand, grabbing all these things. Ugh. All right, get them, and let's get out of here. Okay, so now we're going to get spit back out right in that same spot, and we're going to have to go back to the left, which, as you can guess, these fireballs are really not going to let us do so. Um, so basically, at this point, you just kind of want to take a hit. I almost like made it through. That would have been awesome, but... <laughs> All right, so we're going to go back here. we got this windmill. We're going to keep blowing on it. We're going to have to do so for a while. These bananas are going to keep dropping out of the ceiling, and then eventually a puzzle piece will. So once you do that, you can stop. Of course, that's puzzle piece number six. Now we're going to have to go back and take the lower path in order to grab the end. Wow, that kind of caught me by surprise there. All right, so let's get down there. That one can be kind of a weird jump. We're going to have to do short hops to get across here without jumping up to the top path, of course. So, okay, now i got to deal with these. Just do short hops across, grab the end, and jump up. All right, now i got to get through these fireballs one more time, which, as I've said, is really not as bad as it looks. There we go. Okay, so now we're making pretty good progress. We're nearing the end. So let's make our way through here and not get crushed by that. Make our way throughout these platforms. Okay, jump onto that. Now here we've got some helicopter plants. The right one will have a puzzle piece, which marks number seven. So uh, now all that's left to do is to grab the G. So let's wait for an opening and go. Now here you want to roll jump in order to get up to that one. That's really weird because you have to fall down a little bit first before you jump. So it can be really easy to either just run into the side of that or miss the G completely. But either way, once you grab it, we're done with the level. So there's the Kong letters, all seven puzzle pieces, and we can now move on. So like I said, that one can be, um, it's really crafty, actually, with the way it's hidden, especially with that barrel. You've got to take it a long way. I mean, you wouldn't think to do that your first time through. So I'm going to go to 8-6 Moving Melters. And in this world, the moving part of the title really takes over. We're going to be dealing with a lot of platforms that are um, in the lava and sort of moving, of course. I mean, it's not really a better way to say it. So uh, the platforming here can get a little bit tricky, but hopefully it'll still be all right. So first off, we got to grab this barrel here. They do give it to you for a reason. It's not just randomly there. Now we're going to have to ride these platforms and not get hit by that fireball and lose your barrel. Um, because once we get here, we're going to have to jump up and hit the bag with the barrel. Once we do so, a puzzle piece will come out. So jump over and grab it. That's number one. All right, we got some more moving platforms to deal with. Just time it so you don't get hit by that thing. And then the timing will work out the rest of the way because you can just jump over that. Now, once we get here, we're going to have this big uh, wheel that we're going to have to jump on. And as you can see, the K is sort of falling away right there. Now, we want to grab it. And hopefully, the fireball just won't be in the way. You just kind of have to hope. Now, time it through there. That can be kind of weird, but you really just want to work it out with the first banana you see. And that'll pretty much work out for the rest. Uh, it's hard here if you need it. So, we're going to have to do some jumping up here. And this can be a little bit weird because you are going uphill as well. So... Just, you, you do have plenty of space to make it, though. They wouldn't make an impossible jump for you there. All right, so now i got to ride down some more platforms here, hopefully not getting hit by those things. Oh, man, that's a really... I hate doing that, but... <laughs> All right, now you can see there's a puzzle piece underneath there, so let's blow this guy out real quick. And in order to grab that, obviously, we're going to have to stay on the wheel while it goes down. Uh, so this is a little bit uncomfortable, but you can make it as long as you jump back to the next wheel and then jump back. You'll be just fine. All right, so now we got to jump our way across these and onto some solid ground. As you can see, the O is right there, so let's take this guy out and grab it. Now here we're going to have this giant wheel, and basically what you want to do is actually stay on this as long as you possibly can. To grab the puzzle piece and then jump up just before it sinks and just barely make that. That's a really uncomfortable jump, but um, you got to make it if you want to grab that puzzle piece. Now we want to go here and get right on the edge to blow on this windmill. Once we do so, a platform will come down, we can jump on it, and it will take us up. And into a bonus game. It takes a little while, but it will eventually get you there. Now, this is the one, again, where we're going to have to fire and avoid the barrel in the middle. I've actually kind of grown to like this game a little bit, so I'm not going to complain about it as much as I did at the start. 
Alright, just grab the last one, and then hit the barrel, and there we go. Yeah, I don't know, I guess now that I've gotten more used to it, that bonus game has started to get a little bit more fun, but... Anyway, we're up to four puzzle pieces, so that's definitely good. Uh, now we gotta do a little bit of barreling here. The end is impossible to miss. You have to get that. You don't have a choice, so that's always good. Now here you want to quickly go to the right and grab this puzzle piece before this side starts sinking. So now we've gotten all five puzzle pieces and we have to collect the G still. But as you can see, the G is just right here, so jump up and get it and make sure not to get hit by the fire. Uh, which sometimes can be easier said than done. The good news is I do have four hearts here, really, so... Um, oh crap. Jump! <laughs> Yeah, this really isn't fun. They like to come at, like, diagonal angles and really mess you up. Uh, here it's probably better to go over the top, in between these, and over these. Jump over that one too, I guess. Oh man, that was close. Alright, then eventually the exit barrel will show up over here on the right. I don't know why we couldn't have just jumped there to start with, but I don't know, I guess that's just the way the game works. So there we go, we've got all the Kong letters, all the puzzle pieces, and we are one step closer to reaching the end of the game. So let's get out of here. Now all that's left to do is um, five, or not five, oh, I don't know where I got five from. I guess I wish I was back in the forest, but um, is eight, seven, and then eight K and eight B, and we'll be pretty much done, apparently, so uh, that seems pretty cool. We're going to move on to the last regular level in the game, eight, seven, red, red, rising. And for being the last regular level in the game, this is actually surprisingly easy. I really don't have much trouble with this level at all. Um, it seems like it's going to be fast-paced, especially later on, but really you've got a lot more time than you think. So, um, honestly, the worst part is probably right here at the beginning. we got to jump on these platforms and make our way across. Once you get to the fourth one, the cave will show up to the left. Make sure to go and grab that. Then once you land on this big platform, you're going to have another one coming out. And just jump on that, and that will take you to a bonus game. You can always tell where the platforms are going to come up because the lava will bubble underneath it. So, um, if you want to look down at the ground, that'll be an easy way to tell where the next platform will be. Uh, but for now, let's just finish up this bonus game and get our first puzzle piece. Alright, so now that we've grabbed that, let's keep on going to the right across these platforms. You'll always have something to jump to. They won't just, you know, completely mess you up or anything. And here we get the uh, level's first and only checkpoint. It's right at the beginning, but you're not going to get another one from here on out, so, uh, well, make sure you do good, I suppose. So now here you can see the lava's going to start to rise, of course the name of the level being Red Red Rising. So we're going to have to wait until eventually a rock will come out. It's really close, it's like just at the last minute. But uh, we're going to have to make our way up and uh, pretty much outrun the lava. And as you can see, it seems like there's, uh, you know, you have to be really fast, but actually you do kind of have a lot more time than you think. Um, the puzzle piece is going to appear right here, so make sure you stick around for that. Uh, the lava's still kind of behind us, but you know, it's not like I'm having to rush or anything. Uh, once we get here, uh, you're going to have to avoid these rocks or get hit by them, like I did. I guess that's one way to do things. You're going to want to grab the O up there on the left and then make your way up. These rocks always move in the same pattern, so uh, once you get used to it, you can figure out where to go. Now here, these will try to crush you. You want to go to the right of that one to grab puzzle piece number three, then uh, continue making our way up. And uh, by this point, we've pretty much left the lava completely behind. It really doesn't even feel like we're being chased anymore. So, And we're really not. I mean, I could probably fall about halfway back down the level and still be alright. Um, so now here we want to grab puzzle piece number four. And of course, I've lost Diddy, which is going to make this a little bit more annoying. Bounce off these guys and get up to that platform. If you do miss bouncing on those guys, platforms will eventually come out once the lava rises a little bit more. But um, you probably just want to make the jump. It makes things a little bit quicker. All right, now here, a puzzle piece is going to show up on the left, and that's number five, which marks the final one. All that's left to do is to grab the G, which is pretty much right at the end of the level. So let's just make our way up the platforms. As you can see, I'm sitting here and waiting for quite a bit, not really suffering any penalties. Here you kind of want to hurry a little bit, though. Just make sure to wait at this one so you can grab the G, then mash A, get through the barrels, then hit the exit barrel, and we are good to go. All right, so that pretty much does it for 8-7. Like I said... Really not that difficult. I mean, I wasn't rushed at all. I did get hit a few times, of course, as I was being a little bit careless, to be honest. But, um, well, we made it anyway without too much trouble. So, um, that does it. That's pretty much going to mark the end of 100% completion. Almost. Um, there is actually still a little bit left to do. Like, we still got to grab the uh, K level, get the orb, and then we have to uh, figure out what the secret is once we get all those as well. So... Um, there's still just a little bit to do, but I'm going to move on to 8K 5 Monkey Trial. 
and that is kind of a weird name, but uh, you'll see what it's talking about once we get into it. 8K is really a lot different than any of the K levels. It seems like those uh, like to introduce new mechanics, so um, that's pretty cool at least. This one's actually pretty fun. I, I do enjoy it, so let's get it started. Go over to the right here, we're going to have to pound on this DK thing three times to make these various fruit statues pop up. And each one of those is pretty much going to correspond with one of the five trials we have to face. Um, hence the name of the level, pretty much. So we grab that, and if you want, um, it's a good idea to have Diddy going into this, because this can be a little bit tricky to do without him. Because, uh, as you can see, this is really no easy feat by any means. So, once you grab all the banana coins, the enemies will be defeated, grab the puzzle piece, and then we can move on. So this level is pretty much impossible to not complete 100%. You have to grab the puzzle piece to be able to move on to the next uh, section. So, all right, here you got to be somewhat quick and get back to the left before you get crushed again. Then once you grab all these banana coins, the next puzzle piece will appear. We jump in the barrel and move on to trial number three. So here we're going to have to do some pretty fancy bouncing off of these squid guys, which is really not too bad, um, as long as you actually get the full jump. So let's give it another try. The good news is there's no real penalty for messing up or anything like that. So just make your way to the top, grab all the coins up here, grab the puzzle piece, and move on to the fourth trial. Now this one is really annoying, actually. We're going to have to grab these uh, banana coins as we are rotating along this big wheel here. All the while avoiding these guys, of course. So they can be a little bit annoying. They like to show up at just the worst possible time, and it seems like it keeps getting faster, too, so that's not good. Uh, jump over to the left there. You almost have to fall off to get rid of those guys. Then here, once we're done, the last one will get defeated, and then we can jump in the barrel and move on to trial number five. Now, this one is actually really, really cool. I like this. Um, then once you avoid the boulders, you're going to have to jump up and grab the coin. If you miss the coin, then you're going to have to, like, do another set of boulders. So make sure you jump and grab them in between. Uh, some of these get pretty creative, especially the last one. It's like, how in the world am I supposed to avoid that? But <laughs> uh, you'll see. So that's number three, I believe. I'm going to stay in the middle and then move to the outside. And then grab the coin. Now check this out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you have to just kind of be in the middle whenever they land. That could be a little bit tricky, but it's really fun to do once you know how to do it. So we grab the fifth and final puzzle piece, jump into the barrel, and then as you can see, we're at the end. So really, especially if you have Diddy, it's almost not as hard as the rest of them, but it's a really cool concept, and uh, I think it's really fun, especially that last one. So... Um, 8K definitely gets a thumbs up in my book, but as you can see, that's going to complete our little circle of orbs there, so we are all set to receive a secret. Cool. I don't think we're actually going to be introduced to it yet. I don't remember exactly when we uh, get to see it. Yeah, as you can see, it's just going to take us back to the world map, so um, I suppose we have to beat the game first, but we've made it through eight worlds. We have faced various trials and challenges along the way. And now we are finally ready to face the final boss, 8B Tiki Tong Terror. Let's do it. So of course, like any boss level, we're going to have a little bit of an introduction sequence here, but being the final boss, this one's going to be a little bit longer, so let's step forward and see what we've got. Yep, that is where we need to get to. So, before we get to actually face the boss, look what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do a little bit of a rocket barrel sequence. Alright, that's just what we wanted, right? So yeah, as you can see, it's another one of these vertically scrolling uh, rocket sequences, but this time you will actually need to make sure to use A to move yourself up a little bit, but only when those things are coming in from the sides. Otherwise, I would really advise you to stay at the bottom. Um, because it's very easy to, like, run into things if you're at the very top since you don't have near as much time to react. And sometimes you can be a little bit sluggish in your turning, so... Uh, it's a good idea to really stay at the bottom, except for uh, sections where those crushers are coming in, and this section I kind of like to uh, stay up a little bit, because things are coming from the bottom, you know, so... Um, it's better to have a little bit of range on them here. Alright, so once we get done with that and grab all the bananas we can, we're going to have to do a little bit more avoiding. Again, whenever you see those coming in, just hold A and go up to the top, then go right back down. Um, avoid that stuff. Now we're going to have some things coming in from the sides here. That was actually kind of close, I think. Go through here, and then eventually this happens.
So now we are fighting the final boss, Andros. Oh, wait, no, I mean Diki Tong. I, I think that's his name anyway. So as you can see, he's going to be using his hands to attack us here. I'm going to take this a little bit slow so I have time to explain a few things. Of course, basically all he's going to do is try to attack us with his hands. You can see that the red spot, um, oh yeah, you got to, whenever you see this flash, now, you gotta jump. Man, I was a little bit late. That can be kind of hard to time. It's a little bit tricky, but as you can see, you want to jump on those little red jewels on the back. You jump on each one of the hands twice, and that will um, cause it to explode, and then now we're just down to one. So obviously we're gonna have to take it out. He's gonna get a little angry first. So just jump over the hands. It's really not too hard. He's always, uh, you can tell when he's about to attack because the little gem will flash, and that's when you need to jump. Um, <laughs> the ones like that can be kind of hard to avoid. You have to have really good reaction time, but it is doable. I was just a little slow the first time it happened. And trying to get that hard is also suicide, by the way, because if you land on uh, his palm while it's up like that, he'll actually just crush you and spit you back out. So, you know, <laughs> don't try for that even if you need it. Alright, I think we should be... Oh, wow, yeah, he, he'll fake you out sometimes, too, which I love. That's so cool. And then he'll come right back and attack you. He can do that with really any of his attacks, and it's so funny whenever he does. I love it. But Anyway, now we have taken care of both of the hands, so it's going to be down to just his head here. Diddy Kong helps because you've got to hit that big button or whatever on top of his head. With just Donkey, it can be really hard to get there. Um, if you just, like, hit the side of him, you'll bounce back off. So um, that can be a kind of a hard jump to do if you don't have... Uh, did he? But thankfully we do, and hopefully we can keep him. Um, there's a heart over there, so I might try to grab that. There we go. All right, so now we're back up to four hearts. We're in really good shape here. I think he actually only needs one more hit, and that attack is so cheap, by the way. I hate that move. I get hit by it almost every time just because I'm never expecting it. Well, okay, well, we lost Diddy in the last two hits there. That's awesome. All right, so duck under that. I actually managed to avoid it this time. All right, man, come on. Get yourself back down here so I can finish you off. There you go. Ah. See, like I said, I just hit, like, the side of the button there. We're down to the last hit, and, and I'm screwing this up now. And there we go. That's pretty much it. Not really much of an ending, is it? But um, that's going to do it. Donkey Kong Country is now complete. For the most part. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. But we've defeated the final boss either way, and now the credits are rolling, and we get some little pictures of the uh, guys there. Kind of disappointing, actually. It's not very often I can say I'm disappointed in the credits, but um, if you remember the credit sequence from like, Donkey Kong Country 1, um, maybe it was two also, I don't remember, I haven't actually played that game in a while, but, um, it would have, like, you know, all the enemies scrolling across and giving their names, and then all the helpers scrolling across and giving their names and everything like that. And it was actually a pretty cool little credit sequence, but, I mean, this time it's just words and little pictures of things we've seen. So it's kind of disappointing, I guess, when you compare it to that, but, um, that, I don't know, I, I really wish they would have done something different, but I guess that's just how it goes, so... 
Alright, now that we are at the credits, I suppose we can uh, sort of talk about the game as a whole here. There's not really too much else to do while this is going on, but um, overall, I'm pretty impressed with this game. Um, I think it uh, actually did have some things that had potential, but like could have been, you know, improved on a little bit, or um, some things that they might have just left out entirely. Um, overall, we'll talk about the good. The game is fun to play. It is in incredibly fun so you know that's pretty much the number one thing that you know that really makes it a good uh, a good game in my regards but it's kind of like I need some other things beside it just being fun as well like it's still good yeah but um, there were a couple things um, I, I mentioned in one part the lack of water levels it's that's really disappointing because like I said I think that's pretty much a staple of the Donkey Kong Country series but it wasn't in this one, I guess that's just kind of how it goes and you just learn to live with it. Um, another thing I was kind of disappointed about was that Rambi is really the only helper. I mean, you can see there, yeah, Squawks is in the game, but all he does is point out puzzle pieces for you. You know, it's like you don't actually get to use him like you did in Donkey Kong Country or um, in 2 as well, I think. Maybe even 3, I don't know, I'm not very familiar with that game, but... Um, besides that, you know, there's no On Guard, there's no Espresso, there's no um, Winkly, the Frog. You know, there's no snake from Donkey Kong Country 2 or anything, so in that regard, it's it's really a little bit disappointing to me. Um, also, the final boss is a little bit disappointing. Um, I did get hit a lot, but that's not because it's hard. That's just because I was messing up a lot. So, um, yeah, it, it's kind of like there are a lot of things that really, I think, could have been improved. I guess I can kind of see if they were not really trying to make a remake of Donkey Kong Country. You know, they were kind of just going to make an addition to the uh, to the series, which I guess, you know, they're they're free to go different ways if they want, but I just think if they're going to do a lot of things as throwbacks to Donkey Kong Country, um, for example, like the stage music and a lot of the levels, then I think you want to stay a little bit more true to it. It is still true to it, it's just there are a lot of things that were noticeably missing, if you ask me, but either way, like I said, this game is really, really fun. Um, even if you're not a fan of the series, this game can stand on its own. I've said in a couple of places that's really one thing I like about it it doesn't rely on Donkey Kong Country you know like you may get a little more out of it if you did enjoy the original games but um, if you're just new to the series and this is the first game you play it's not it's not a bad choice you know it really does stand on its own so um, it's fun it's pretty um, they have a, they had a lot of cool ideas that they introduced and it really really is a good game Uh-oh, the Golden Temple has been revealed. Does this mean that we are not done yet? Well, we'll just have to find out next time on Donkey Kong Country Returns. Until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.